So after the tax connection, so we're now looking for the technological connection. So I'll be calling on the, uh, the founder and CEO of Calero Technologies and the Tech Vida Lab. Uh, that is Kenneth Montana to please give us the technological connection. We have a presentation. Uh, let's just see if I can. So. Okay, thanks for having me. Absolute honor. I actually told my dad about what I was doing today and he said he has to come. So he's just over there anyway. So, proud. <laughs> um, so I'm the founder of a company called Claro um, Technologies. Uh, actually, this is on short notice, so it took me 48 hours to just get this document together, so please bear with me. So basically, um, this is, as you can see, accountability and transparency in Africa, block by block. So, some quick interesting facts. I love to touch on the positive points first, before we really go into the corruption aspect, yes? So, Africa, second largest continent in the world, with 11.7 million of square miles and 54 sovereign countries. Africa has one of the few places on earth left unclaimed by any country or any state. Africa is one of the second um, longest river in the world, the River Nile. Some people say it's the longest, but others say it's Amazon. Africa lies on all four hemispheres of the earth, which is phenomenal across the equator. And last but not least, the continent has the largest reserves of precious metals, over 40% of gold reserves, 60% um, of cobalt, and 90% of platinum reserves. So, vastly rich continent. Let's go to the problems. The effects of public sector corruption. Income distribution. Unemployment rate. Increasing sky high. Environmental issues that's having a massive impact. And this is also connected to public health. So all integrated together, there's some core problems that we need to solve yesterday. Some quick stats. And I just talked some some countries all over Africa, not on default, but you can clearly see in terms of the population size of Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, so I've taken different areas of, of Africa. You can look at the GDP, it's clear to see that Nigeria, 370 billion in terms of gross domestic product. You can take a look at the World Bank CPI in terms of transparency and accountability, in terms of numbers. But what's also interesting on the last, you can see the corruption perception index. So Nigeria, for example, is 148 out of 180 in terms of the most corrupt nation in the world. Quite clear indication we've got Rwanda here, 48. So that's quite low for a country that has a population of about 10 million people that went through a genocide where they lost 10% of the country. That is extremely low. So I'm going to touch on some points in terms of what Paul Kagame has been doing and why that small country is really flourishing. Blockchain. Anyone heard about blockchain? Raise your hands. Anyone heard about bitcoins? Raise your hands. So more people are about bitcoins than blockchain, yes? So let's keep this very simple. Blockchain is effectively the new internet. Bitcoin is effect like a website, yes? That's a simple analogy. The exact terminology or definition, blockchain is a distributed, decentralized public ledger that will enable you to record transactions across various nodes. And most importantly, these transactions cannot be deleted. So if I'm someone within the public sector and I've received some funds and I want to maybe put it in my pocket, this information in terms of documentation flow, transactions, is immutable. That means it cannot be deleted. This is extremely important. And this is going to change the way corruption and how people do things moving forward. So how does it actually work? Block by block. 
So what it does is it stores the information in terms of the transaction, the date, the time. It stores the digital signature, which basically means it's pseudo anonymous. So it doesn't show the exact name of the person that sent it or received it, or the company name, but it's basically a contract, a smart contract. And then it stores the unique code, sorry. It stores the unique code, and this code we call the hash, to keep it simple, which is a hash transaction. This hash transaction connects to the unique ID of every documentation, every payment, every communication that's happening along the blockchain. So what do we do, Calero? So we enable and the destructive technology to ease friction between organizations and also governments. So whether you have a small one person organization or to an enterprise with thousands of employees or whether your government running one of the biggest um, countries in Africa or a very, very small we provide the value that will enable for transparency and accountability in every single thing that you do. In addition to that, it's an integrated mesh of networks. We call this the fourth revolution in terms of IoT. So integrating the documentation flow, so minister, minister speaking to the UK task force or the EFCC speaking to the Hong Kong regulators, to the payments in terms of the funds that's flowing, where it's Naira, where it's cities, where it's dollars, covering that whole transaction, to the network, the communication that's happening. If someone's gonna send an email to someone else, how do I know? How can you be able to verify that information flow? To the risk and fraud intervention, which is extremely important, and this is why I'm on the stage today. To cash flow, time tracker app, and that's something we can talk about later on. So I'm here today not to talk about facts, not to talk about this is what we can do, not to talk about should have, could have, would have, forget about what's happened in the past. How can we move forward? How can we implement technology to provide value in terms of what you're doing, sir, that could be able to enable you for transparency? And this is what we are doing today, and this is what we've created. So what you can clearly see, I hope you can see this, this is a dashboard, and this is an anti-corruption agency dashboard that will enable the task force in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Zimbabwe, that they can be able to use. And what then happens is, it will show of any um, assets that's confiscated, <coughs> if it's a property, if it's land, if it's cars, the documentation will be uploaded to the blockchain. So once it's uploaded to the blockchain, it shows the entry number. It shows the date when it was uploaded. It shows the person that uploaded the data, whether the person uploaded it in Abuja or in Accra. Doesn't matter where you are, it will show that. It will then show the asset address. So if a property was confiscated in Abuja, it will tell the exact address. And they're not saying the owner of that property. And this dashboard is provided to the ministers, provided to the people within the EFCC, the West, West African um, nation in terms of the agency, to the UK task force, to the Hong Kong task force. So everyone's interconnected and they can see this whole communication flow. Then you have the authentication records. So once these documents are uploaded, what's really important is that we don't wait for six months for this to go through the courts. This needs to be fast tracked immediately, no messing about. So as soon as this uploaded, the document, the judge, whoever's appointed, will have access to these assets and the case immediately. They can be able, the judge will be able to open up and then they can be able to take a look at the specific information. Then, you can be able to cross-check the ownership with the information that's uploaded to the document that everyone's communicating and they can see the whole process. And this is a clear description in terms of assigning someone within office 
to be able to put in the asset category, whether it's property, the subcategory, the details and features of the information, whether it's a joint ownership, a single ownership, the asset address, the owner name, the identity. And then also you upload PDF, JPEG, Excel sheets. It does not matter. And then you have the court activity log. So there's a lot of bureaucracy red tape that tends to happen with these processes. But what we want to do is ensure that there's a log of all of this data that everyone can have access to. And that means the log will show the case number, it will show whether there's appeal being made or failed. And in this case, an example it says, failed appeal, order under the proceeds of crime still stands which means the assets would now have to be sold and then be sent to whichever bureau. And the key thing is what then happens when the assets are sold? This is the most important thing. The money has to be redirected back into the country for education, for sustainability, for environment. This is how we would grow as a continent. And we have to start today. So it goes down to case, in this case the second one would say confiscation order has been enforced. It gives you the date, it gives you the exact judge that enforced this. Whether this is in Nigeria, whether this is in Ghana, Zimbabwe, it does not matter. Then it goes all the way down the whole process, whether it's enforced or not. Then, we have the management team. So if I'm working in the EFC, EFCC, and there are 20 employees, I want to assign specific tasks and responsibilities. Not internally, but also externally. So you can see the exact name of the person, uh, which specific role they're working on, what the duties are, and this information can be accessed not just within the anti-corruption agency, but also to other ministries within the country. So there's an accountability. So I don't need to pick up the phone and chase someone to find out what's happening. I just log into this platform and this is on the blockchain, which means once it's registered, I can't delete it. There's proof, it's immutable. It cannot be deleted. It's the first of its kind. Then once, obviously, if we're talking about a property in this case, then obviously if a property is being confiscated, there may be tenants in the property. So obviously they're paying rent. So that means you need to then appoint a property management service to be able to look after that property while it's going through the court case. Because this could take months potentially. So the question is, is where, where's this rent going to? Where's the income being moved? So what tends to happen is you can see here, it shows the bank account details where the rent's going to. It shows the management fees that the, the management agencies are receiving for their work. It shows the amount of budget that's for any internal work that needs to be done to the property. And then also any additional services. It gives a breakdown of all the management companies because sometimes we hear a lot of news that friends of friends would uh, appoint management services to do certain cases. Well, we can clearly see what's really happening now. And then in terms of the most important part is the transaction. And this is where the transaction is. So once a transaction made, you can be able to see the whole breakdown of the transaction. Uh, I'm, obviously I've got a couple of minutes to go very quickly. So this is the chat. So you can be able to communicate with people in ministers, your colleagues, internal team, and upload documentation. Anyway, just to move forward is how, what, what are the steps to take? Steps to take now is implementation of blockchain that could be able to assist. This is not going to take people out of the equation. This is to be able to assist to minimize the corruption, minimize the embezzlement, minimize the illicit outflow of funds. So if we can contribute towards minimizing it from a million to 10 million to 100 million, then we know we've done something. Number two, we need to look at setting up 
these type of structures, units in every ministry to educate, create awareness amongst respective officials. We need to look at fast tracking these processes through the courts, straight to the judge. And those found guilty would obviously face the wrath. And in, in terms of the previous slide when I spoke about Paul Kakabi, is that he implemented and executed advances in economic development in terms of security, stability, women's rights. And this is the step that people should really follow. So if Nigeria doesn't take advantage of this, then another country will. And people are going to be looking on Nigeria saying, wow, they are implementing technology, they have a vision, and that's how we're going to grow. Thank you for your time.